Let's get right into it now with Breitbart Politics editor Emma Jo Morris. Emma, thanks for joining me on the very first U.S. report of 2024. Now, big win for Trump in Iowa, and of course, the media went into full meltdown mode. Check out MSNBC's Rachel Maddow here, explaining why viewers should be spared the horror of having to hear Trump. Listen to this. At this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. Uh, we will let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy, something substantive and important. Um, the reason I'm saying this is, of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. It is not out of spite. It is not a decision decision that we relish. It is a decision that we regularly revisit. Um, and honestly, earnestly, it is not an easy decision. But there is a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. That is a fundamental truth of our business and who we are. And so his remarks tonight will not air here live. We will monitor them. Now, Emma, I knew MSNBC viewers were snowflakes, but do they really need to be spared even hearing a little bit of Donald Trump in Iowa? It's amazing. You know, first of all, I, I always, whenever there's an election that has anything to do with Trump, I always turn to MSNBC because I can gauge how well it's going, not by the numbers on the screen, but how suicidal the panel is that's on at that moment. So... Um, <laughs> It's incredible how how emotional they get, and and that I mean that was so amazing, especially from Rachel Maddow, who, by the way, is a very smart person. That is a Rhodes Scholar that you just heard say that. This is not some clown that they picked up off the subway on 47th Street outside Rockefeller Center. Um, you know, this is a person though who sat on the air for over, over four years for the entire duration of Trump's presidency and said with a straight face that the elected president of the United States was a Manchurian candidate who was in collaboration with Putin running some nefarious scheme um, to, to somehow uh, give Russia control of the country or unclear actually what, what really the claim was. But in any event, she was maliciously lying to her audience for four years um, with a straight face uh, while having you know the former CIA director John Brennan do it with her. So um, I don't really understand how she says that and we're all supposed to, what, forget um, her, her top-rated show spewing absolute nonsense for, for, you know, the last however many years, please. And, uh, and I mean, it's crazy because they pull up shows that come from the right on any tiny little factual thing, but apparently on the left, you can just get yeah. away with that. But speaking of uh, weird stories of people lying and not telling the truth here. This is a fascinating story that broke over the break here, and I want to bring this to Australian viewers here. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had a health emergency, suffered complications from surgery, didn't tell anybody, including the president, that he was going on this medical leave for days. And now this audio has come out of his aides calling an ambulance for him and telling the ambulance service, don't make a big deal about it when you come to the house. Listen to this. Can I ask, can the ambulance not show up with lights and sirens? Um, we're trying to mm -hmm. remain a, a little subtle. Now, this whole weird thing of the defense secretary in the middle of multiple global security crises going AWOL like this, well, how is this acceptable? This feels like something, Emma Jo, out of, like, the Chinese Communist Party where top officials just disappear like this. Yeah, this is this is nuts. I mean, honestly, actually, the 911 call, I mean, it adds color to the whole saga, but I, I wouldn't, you know, D.C. is a very small town, and everybody knows, especially if you have a high-profile person like uh, Secretary Austin living on your street, everybody kind of knows who lives where. And I can see why they would have wanted maybe the, the sirens shut off on the ambulance to come pick him up. I can see why that wouldn't maybe be something that they're broadcasting to the general public, but the fact that they didn't tell the White House is just remarkable. That is such a scandal. It can't be overstated. I mean, we have multiple theaters right now where we, we either have direct interest, we have direct um, involvement, or we've inserted ourselves, like in the case of Ukraine. And uh, the fact that he just kind of took off, didn't tell the boss, uh, while he's apparently leading this army, is shocking and terrifying.
<laughs> Indeed it is. Now, finally, before I let you go, I gotta ask you now, because you're an expert on all of this misinformation and disinformation stuff here. The government has finally come out, the DOJ has come out, and in a filing confirmed that Hunter Biden's laptop was, in fact, the real deal, and they knew about it the whole time. This means the president lied, the Department of Justice lied, and, of course, all of these social media companies that censored what was the truth about this, they also lied. Tell us more about this and what this means in terms of these ongoing efforts to censor not just the Hunter Biden laptop, but anything that people in power decide is misinformation. Yeah, well, there is a reason why we don't have a ministry of truth in America and in any, you know, free thinking society is because the government is stacked with liars. Shocking, I know. Uh, but the thing is, this is this is um, ought to have the American people absolutely furious and surely does. You know, a, a poll came out just last week that 71 percent of the American public believe that the censorship of the laptop from hell of the Hunter Biden laptop reporting did impact the outcome of the election. And then obviously, you know, you have Joe Biden, who's perhaps the slipperiest man in America, aside from maybe his son, who will <laughs> never come out and and apologize for the disinformation that he spread on the debate stage when he was confronted about the dealings of his family and his son uh, and what that implicated for him. So it's disgusting, um, but it's not surprising. And uh, and it's just, it's, it's another instance of how we need regulation, obviously, to protect the public square from government interference, because these people have no problem uh, throwing an election with it. Emma Jo Morris, Breitbart Politics Editor, thank you so much for joining us. And for Australians, this is a great cautionary tale about that misinformation bill Labor is trying to get up later this year. Emma Jo Morris, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.